Well, everyone, welcome to Hygiene Elevated Conversations and Innovations. Today, we've got Savannah with us, and we're going to be discussing her transition out of dentistry. So, Amanda, I will let you get started with the questions. First off, Savannah, thank you so much for joining us and telling us about your experience. So the first question that we have for you, um, tell us about your journey um, of dental hygiene. What initially attracted you to the field of dental hygiene? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I would say I had a pretty typical journey into dental hygiene, I think. Um, I started college and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Well, the plan was to be an optometrist. Um, and then I think my second semester in, my sister had mentioned dental hygiene. I started to look into it. I really liked the flexibility and the pretty good pay. And so I just started to look into it. I wasn't completely set on doing dental hygiene. And so I just applied to one school, Utah College of Dental Hygiene. And I decided if I didn't get in, then I would just stick with my route for optometry. And I got in and, um, yeah, the rest was history <laughs> until now. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what were, how long did you practice dental hygiene? I was a hygienist for, I think, just under nine years. Oh, wow. So yeah. definitely a, a significant amount of time. It was. What were some of the things that you really loved about being a hygienist? Some of your experiences? What was the rewarding side of that for you? So for me, I would say the number one thing was the flexibility. I definitely got that. So the things that attracted me to it, I was able to eventually achieve with it. Um, I know when I first started, I was nervous because the offices I worked at were very rigid <laughs> schedules. They didn't like when I traveled. Uh, they, you know, I worked like five to seven days a week just to like, there were offices that were open on Sunday, <laughs> um, just to start paying off my loans and, you know, start making money. So at first I was nervous. I was like, this isn't what I signed up for. I was definitely more of a profi princess. You know, I didn't have the like confidence yet to really talk to patients who were like in the middle, you know, like, is it an SRP? Is it not? Um, and so I, I wasn't finding a lot of joy with it yet. Then I was very fortunate my third year in to find an office that I was their first hygienist. And while I don't know if it was, you know, usually people find an office like that where they're building the hygiene schedule themselves a little later on in their career. Um, so I definitely had to do a lot of Googling and just a lot of, you know, I attempt a lot during that time and kind of took from other offices um, and kind of built the practice up. But, but yeah, sorry, I kind of went off um, off tangent. But so no, that's all. I think all that background is really great. So yeah. go for it. Yeah, yeah so um, this, Savannah, yeah. I want to okay. jump in and ask you, um, you mentioned you were like just busting your butt to pay off your student loans. Um, mm -hmm. Did you pay it off before transitioning out now? I did. Yes, I was so fortunate. Oh, congratulations. I was, yeah, I was not in a great situation because I didn't have a great car when I moved to Texas. And so I had to get a leased car. I put nothing down. So I had a lot of debt. You know, our school is not cheap. I had the car, um, you know, living on my own. It was pretty expensive. And so I just busted my butt, paid everything off. Um, and then with that office that I was at, um, year three, it's called the Dennis Houston West Chase. I have to plug them. They are amazing bosses. They did a lot for me. Um, yeah. But I was able to get a really competitive um, bonus structure with them. And one of my main goals was in hygiene was I wanted to work three or four days a week and get paid like I was working five or six. And so at there, that was achievable. That was, and so that really helped me to, you know, be able to, you know, pay off the loans and pay off the car and everything and save. Um, I had to save a bit for this transition and yeah, so I was able to do that. So you went to hygiene school here in Utah and you moved to Texas? Yes, correct. So what was that timeline? Did you ever practice here in Utah before you moved to Texas? I did practice in Utah a bit. I don't think I actually had a permanent job. I didn't have a permanent job in Utah. I just temped. Um, and then I felt like it's very saturated there. And I don't, I, I didn't have luck finding an office that uh, really valued hygienists and, you know, like gave them mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, the tools and instruments that they need. And so, I decided I had been in Houston um, right after I graduated just for the summer. I had temped there and I was brand new and every office I worked at offered me 
a job and just because they're so wow. desperate. Um, not that I was that good when I was new. Um, so I knew, <laughs> so I, you know, I was temping in, in Utah. It wasn't turning out great for me. And so I was like, well, I'm just going to try it in Texas for a little bit. I already knew I could get a job there. Um, and yeah, it brought me to Texas, which I really liked. It's the only thing I didn't like. And I think it actually just changed as I couldn't do anesthesia. Um, in oh, Texas. finally they changed it. I read something. I didn't do much research on it, but I read something that they did. And I did keep my hygiene license in Utah the whole time because I thought that would kind of give me an edge once they did, um, mm -hmm. you know, change it. So just in the nick of time, I moved and then they changed it. Well, um, yeah, Savannah, I am. Speaking, oh, ahead. sorry. Um, yeah, Savannah, speaking of the licenses, are you going to keep your Texas license active? Yes, I'm going to keep my Texas and my Utah license active. I just decided that I'm actually going to probably just work on getting my Florida license. Um, with real estate, I'm sure you know it just takes a while to build up a book of clients. And I am planning to spend most of my time Monday through Friday, even some weekends, building that client base. But I like you know the flexibility, and I already had a couple offices that I talked to before I decided I was going to do real estate in Florida. And they offered some kind of, you know, um, flexible schedule. So I might be doing hygiene here just on like a Saturday or Sunday until I really build up and ramp up my real estate business. Wow. So you're in Florida now. Yes. In Texas. Okay. I have a random question. Okay. So I moved. So it's a question about the cost of licenses because this okay. changes and it's different for each state. So I practiced in New Mexico um, that's where I went to school and I practiced for 10 years. Um, our license was on a three year cycle and it's $300 to renew it every three years. Okay. So I was shocked when I renewed my Utah license. It's like 50 bucks or something for two years. Yes, Utah. So I don't remember it's a ton, so cheap. but Utah is so cheap. Texas, I think is relatively cheap. Um, you have to do it every two years. And again, my boss was amazing. He ended up paying for it when I worked with him for the past five wow. years or him and her, sorry. It's a husband and wife practice. Um, I don't want <laughs> Dr. Robbins to think I'm, you know, not talking good about her, but um, yeah. So <laughs> I, I think it was, yeah, relatively cheap there. And I'm not sure about Florida. I know in Florida, I have to take a whole nother set of tests and that I think is at least a thousand. Oh. So that'll be expensive. And I don't know about renewal yet, but the fees definitely change a lot. And I know like I was looking into Georgia and there's, you know, if you do your license by examination, it's only a couple hundred. If you do it by credentials, it's like 2000. So it definitely changes a lot. It's, it's not cheap to keep up, but I do think in the long run, it's worth it. If, you know, if you work yeah. a couple days, you'll pay for it for sure. So definitely no, worth I, it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where I'm at. My New Mexico license expires this month. And I'm like, I live in Utah. Should I really keep it? But my old office manager is like, yes, yes, you are going to keep it yeah. back in New Mexico. So remember all the paperwork you had it. to do. I feel like there's so much paperwork. I'm like, I might as well just keep it. You know, it's worth it. And yeah, maybe yeah. I do a plan to be in real estate for a really long time. I plan to be successful with it. And so maybe eventually I won't keep it, but I think it's a really good backup. It's very flexible, decent pay. So if yeah. anything happens, you know, after COVID, you really learned that no industry is safe. And so I think while well, industrial, which is the uh, specific area of commercial that I'm getting into, industrial still was strong, you know, you never know. So might as well keep hygiene license up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What were you going to ask, Joffrey? Oh, I was just going to say, um, I had recently applied for an Idaho license um, to help one okay. of my clients out there. And I was so surprised because they actually did a background check. They wanted not only like uh, my current licenses, but I also had to like request uh, my test scores from school. And mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, this is... And then like alpha Davids from other people who have worked with me, like I was shocked at how many like hoops you have to jump through to get a license. So I would, yeah. I would definitely be like, yeah, if you have it, hang on to it, Amanda, definitely Just keep, keep it. Like it. Um, but there I also is. wanted to say, uh, Savannah, I think it is so cool that you are um, like slowly phasing out of hygiene while you're phasing into the real estate. Like I think that's almost like the beauty of hygiene is that that part time that drew you in is still benefiting you at this moment. I think that's really cool. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it, it's a, such a good oper- like a good flexibility schedule. You know, at first I was like, I'm not going to do it because a big thing with real estate is everyone always says you get out of what you put into it. And so I didn't want to even have the option. You know, I know it's going to be hard. I don't have the option to like go to a really comfortable space again, you know, and just, oh, well, I'll just, you know, if it gets hard in real estate, I'll just go back to hygiene. So I didn't want that option, but, um, but also I like the, the security of it. And like it, if it will give me enough income to be able to, you know, push longer in real estate while it does take time to build my client base, then it'll definitely be worth it. And I feel like I've found so many people who do that. There's so many people who have hygiene as a secondary job. And when I first started with the money that I, you know, were making in it, I was like, why would people do that? It makes enough money, but I just think it's, it really allows you the opportunity to go for your passions. Not to say you can't be passionate about hygiene. I was for a really long time. And I still kind of am, but um, yeah, I feel like it's, there's a lot of benefits to it. No, that's the perfect so segue. Good, yeah. Um, oh yeah, I was just going to say perfect segue. Yes. Um, what made you decide to get out of hygiene? What was the one point for you? Um, so it was really two points. I would say one was the strain that it puts on your body. I feel like I hear that in every Facebook group, every hygiene group, you know, it's the, it is ruining their bodies. And I do think in part that was to, because I started, you know, five to seven days a week. I think people who are more mm-hmm. realistic when they start and have, you know, two to three days a week, it, you can have that for a really long time. But that was one of the main things is just the strain. It was putting on my body. I heard a podcast or a quote or something and I'm going to butcher it, but basically they said, you know, like what amount of money would you would you take to, you know, cut off your arm? You know, like there's an, there's an amount of money that you would do to kind of like ruin your body. And I was like, well, it's definitely not what I'm making in hygiene, probably millions it would take for me to do something like that, you know? And just logistically, it's never going to pencil out to pay a hygienist 300,000, 500,000, you know? So, um, which, which segues into the next thing. It's just the like relatively low cap of earning potential. It's, it's very good. Um, it's, yeah, hygienists make really good money, but I also wanted to see what I could do when there was no cap. Um, and with real estate, it, you have to put a lot of work into it, but people can make hundreds of thousands, if not millions. Um, and so that was another thing I didn't expect to reach my goals in hygiene as quickly as I did. And that was in part because I'm a hard worker, but also in part because my office was amazing. I got very fortunate with them. And yeah, so I just wanted to see what I could do when there was no limit. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I'm also really curious. You had mentioned um, you knew some other people that had hygiene as a background. What other types of careers were they in um, instead of hygiene anymore? Um, So I'm thinking of some of the girls in Joffrey's in my class. I know one of them does like a fitness company. Um, She looks so good. She's so fit. (laughs) Um, I think (laughs) uh, like... I view it as a career, you know, a lot of people are like a stay at home mother. So they're able to be a mom, but then also bring some income in. So I think that's a big thing um, is having the flexibility mm-hmm. with your kids. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, what other ones, um, I think just even like starting their own businesses, like starting a little, you know, boutique, um, what's it called? Like clothing shop or yeah, I, I feel like I've seen quite a few. Yeah. I just can't think of very many like specific, except for one girl we went to, um, high school with Camry. She has this amazing fitness program that she does. And yeah, I just see a lot of them. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I think I've seen um, like the, I don't want to say online boutiques, but that kind of seems to be something that you can manage pretty easily. Mm-hmm. So, so what kind of dr- not drove you, but kind of encouraged you to do real estate? Was it that um, potential of no cap for income or was there something else that really got you on that path for your, your new career? Um, so I think it started, there was, you know, definitely the potential for income. Um, and then, yeah, I think I, I just started, I was like, well, I know that it's a relatively low barrier to entry just to get into real estate in general. It's a course, the course is a couple hundred dollars. It takes, you can do it in a couple of weeks. I was working full time when I did it cause I was saving to move to Florida. So I did it in, you know, two months and, um, yeah. So I was like, you know, I'll do this. And I kind of was like, I'll do it like as a side thing. Um, and then maybe figure out from there what I want to do. And I started taking the course and I'm really competitive. <laughs> and in the course, they said less than <laughs> 1% of agents ever get out of residential. And right from then I was like, 
I'm going to do something that's not residential. <laughs> um, and that led me to commercial. And then my brother-in-law, he works for a, um, he's a project manager for Arco. It's an industrial, well, they're a construction company, but he does specifically industrial and warehouses. And so he was just kind of talking to me about what he does for a little bit. I was thinking of doing, um, like what he does, but you have to go to school for it for a bit. And, um, then I just got into industrial real estate and I started listening to podcasts. It was really interesting. Um, I liked that it was a very male dominant industry. Hygiene, as you know, is more female dominant and I'm already dramatic enough. You know, I need all these <laughs> males around me. So like, it will push me not to cry at things, you know? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I liked, I think, you know, with anything with sales, you need something that kind of like makes you stand out and being a female in a heavily male dominant industry, it's a lot of like good old boys, um, a lot of older people, they all call me young, which I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. It's like, I don't, I don't think I'm young. Um, so yeah, just a completely different industry. And I liked that. Yeah, there's, there weren't a lot of similarities. So I really just had to like start fresh. I've moved a lot over my life, and I think that starting completely fresh is really attractive to me because you can create, reinvent yourself and create yourself and what you want to be. It's a long that's answer. So awesome. Sorry. Like, honestly, that's no, love I, we love long answers. It gives us a lot to, to work with and think about. But just, I mean, having that courage, but it sounds like you enjoy a good challenge. So I think you're in the right field. Hopefully. Sure. It, it definitely <laughs> seems challenging. This is my first week and it has been a whirlwind, but it's been amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. So what um, skills or experiences that you gained while you were in um, practice as a hygienist do you think are going to kind of carry over into real estate? Yeah. So I don't think it's any knowledge, you know, like, of you know, like there's the my terminology of gingiva and sulculus and that's not going to ever help me um but i think what's really going to help me is the confidence that comes with already have having success so i know a lot of people who start they start when they're really young they're just out of college and while they might have had success in you know a sport or in their grades in college they haven't had a lot of real world success and i already know mm -hmm. what it takes to put in the work put in the hours and build something out of nothing um I also already know what it's like. I started two days a week at that office and had to do a ton of recalls and I hate recalls. And, you know, in, in, in dentistry, it's recalls in real estate, it's cold calls. And so I already know what it takes to mm -hmm. build a client base or a patient base. Um, and I know that I'll do the things that I hate. Like, I, I don't know if anyone likes like doing recall. Um, I know that I'm not going to mm -hmm. like it. I know it's heavy and, you know, cold calls are heavy in real estate, but I already know that I'll be able to do, you know, those hard things. Um, so I'd say that's one of the main ones. And then the other one, as I'm sure you've all, you all, you've both heard, um, is, you know, everyone always is like you, like they come into the dentist and they're like, I, I hate being here. I don't want to be at the dentist. You're w working a lot with people <laughs> who are very nervous and they, um, you have to really learn to pivot your plans for the day. You know, you have an appointment, you're supposed mm -hmm. to get this, this, and this done. And then this nervous, pa nervous patient comes in and you have to stop, listen to what they want and, you know, treatment plan accordingly or not treatment plan, your treatment plan for what they need, but plan your day accordingly or your appointments with them accordingly. And I feel like that will really transfer over because in real estate, you have to listen to your client and they come first. And I think a lot of people easily will be like, well, you know, let's do what will make me the most money. And in the long run, that's not going to work with patients. If you're really pushy on them and you're like, you have to do this today, they're just going to go somewhere else. And it's the same with real estate. Your client, they're going to be able to tell if you're just pushing for money. And so I think that's a big thing that I learned is the long game and gaining like loyalty and trust from the beginning. Those are great, really great points. Thank really, you. Really um, points. I want to add to that, Savannah. <laughs> I think your competitiveness and your drive mm -hmm. are what will set you apart in your um, journey with real estate. I think you've got that hygiene heart, that hygiene soul where you just want to help people and also be successful. And mm -hmm. I, just, I definitely see you just carrying that with you. Thank you. Yeah, I hope I can. <laughs> so you kind of um, made some points earlier about how you transitioned 
Um, you made sure that you were financially, you know, keeping your house in order, which is smart and wise and, and very stable because you never know what's going to happen in the world these days. Um, were there any other specific resources or support systems that help you that helped you navigate your change from hygiene into real estate? Yes. Um, yeah. So like I mentioned, my brother-in-law, he was really a key um, person. I already had decided I wanted to get into real estate, but when I moved to Florida, he really helped me gain like a base knowledge. He walked me around warehouses, introduced me to some people, and then helped me gain that base knowledge of warehouses and building them and what it takes to run one and stuff like that. Um, so he was a huge player in that um, podcast. I did not listen to a ton of them before, and that's why I'm so willing to a podcast because podcasts help me so much get an idea of what's happening in industrial. Um, it's not like residential where there's a lot of information on it. And so one podcast specifically, it's called the Industrial Real Estate Podcast um, by Chad Griffiths. And he was amazing. He helped me so much. Um, yeah, and then even like a lot of people... When I heard them on the podcast, I would message them from like LinkedIn or on social media. A lot of them reach back out to me, which is insane because they're highly successful people. They're like, yeah, if you ever need help, you know, reach out. And so I started to build like a network through there. And then I think it, it because it's such a big networking community, it's just one person introduced me to another and to another. And that really helped me get into the brokerage that I'm at now. That's so awesome. I think similar in 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 dentistry but once you like kind of have an in and you develop these friendships and relationships everyone um, knows everyone within, i mean yeah everyone mm -hmm. knows everyone i've been here in utah for it'll be three years and i'm like oh yeah i know kirsty who's over this dso she's the manager for this you know whatever mm -hmm. so it, it is kind of funny how once you get into um, networking, you, you kind of do find that it's a fairly small world, Yeah, whatever you kind of get tool. into in your market. So I wish I took advantage more of networking yeah. in hygiene, but you know, I had a good office. And so <laughs> when we went to things, we never networked because I liked my office. And so I was like, well, I don't need to meet anyone else, <laughs> but it's not just about like finding a job, you know, it's learning new things, yeah. you know, in your industry and, um, keeping up to date and yeah. Yeah. I love networking. No, I, I totally agree. So what are you most excited about in your new career path? Um, right now, it's such a mix of excited and nervous because I don't know what all to expect. <laughs> um, but I think I'm most excited about like being proud of myself, you know, <laughs> like I, I don't yeah, feel like I... That accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. I just know um, like hygiene was definitely hard. It pushed me in a lot of ways, but... I, because I reached the level of success that I wanted early on, I felt like, you know, like, oh, I can do more, I can do more. So I'm excited to, yeah, see how far I can go and just be like really proud of myself knowing I did something that like the success rate of people who, or sorry, not the success, the failure rate of people who succeed in, in commercial real estate specifically, but real estate in general is so low. And so I just really, my competitiveness is I'm like, I want to, I want to win. I want to succeed. And I'm excited <laughs> to have that potential. That's, that's awesome. Um, going back to kind of networking, um, do you kind of plan on staying connected with your connections in the dental field? Yes. So it's actually really funny. <laughs> so um, a couple of people, like I, I all of a sudden got into these Facebook, uh, like dental and hygiene groups uh, uh yeah on facebook and i have been more active in them than i have ever been <laughs> like once i got out of hygiene i think <laughs> it's that you want to you know stay you know when you have like a little bit too much of something i was working so much and um i you go home and you don't really want to talk about hygiene and now i'm like oh i kind of mm -hmm. miss it like the other day, this girl, um, one of the interns at our it's brokerage. It's like nostalgia yeah. for you at this point. Well, it is. And I kind of <laughs> like talking about, like, I do miss talking about things that I know what I'm talking about, you know, right now, I don't know anything mm -hmm. in my industry or I don't know much in my industry. <laughs> and so the other day, this girl was talking about, she was drinking coffee. She's like, oh, I have to be careful. Um, I've been doing whitening. And I like looked over <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I was like, okay, drink the straw, drink water after, you know, like all these little things. Um, <laughs> 
And so, yeah, a very long winded answer to say, I definitely want to stay involved in the industry and definitely going to stay friends um, with people in the industry. And my bosses, like I've said, you know, they, they've been amazing. So I hope to stay in contact with them and um, yeah. And also, you know, I, I do plan to probably temp a little bit here and there. And so, um, yeah, I want to just keep my skill up and keep in contact with people to know, make sure I'm like staying ahead of the game and, you know, uh, up to date with the new technologies. Cool. Yeah. What area of Florida? I'm totally, I'm curious. We, my husband and I travel to Florida in the fall every year. So yeah. I'm just curious. So we're in Northeast Florida. So Jacksonville, um, okay. not a lot of people travel here yet, but people are moving here in like <laughs> droves. Like it's a lot of people are moving here. Um, you know, it's not as expensive as Miami or something, but you still get the pretty beaches. It's a little mm -hmm. more like chill, retired vibe. Um, but yeah, it's a huge hub now and they're really pushing for um, growth in the, you know, commercial world or just in all of it. Yeah. All the industry, they're pushing for growth and we're seeing a lot of people move here. Yeah. So Jacksonville. <laughs> I, I've heard, especially in um, Florida, like the real estate market is like going through the roof. Like Texas, Tennessee, and Florida are are going crazy right now. Yeah, it's funny actually. In I didn't really know very much when I was there, but um, Florida and Texas really rival each other. I think Texas is a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So Evan always says like you got into commercial real estate just to move to Florida when Texas is you know a little bit like beefier <laughs> with it. But I also kind of like that. You know, I I started my other office and it was newer and I got to build it up. So I want to start somewhere where. I still have a lot of opportunity for, you know, building it up. The brokerage I'm starting at, it's a national brokerage, but this is their first um, location in Jacksonville. So I tend to gravitate to opportunities where you do have to put more work in because you're building something from the, you know, the ground up. Um, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I'm excited for you. I think my dad did real estate, but he got into real estate in like 2008. So oh, like gosh. worst possible time. Yeah. Yes. And I, he let his license go and I really wish he hadn't, like, he just kind of got so discouraged because he was yeah. not making money. So I'm excited for you on your new career path. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like that 2008 stuff is real feet to the fire learning the, the people who stayed in it, <laughs> they struggled a lot then. But then the thing is like mm -hmm. people, you know, tend to back off in those times when the you know, economy is going crazy. And then right after is when you have a boom. So if you can stay hungry in those moments and really keep pushing through, you know, he probably would have been crazy successful. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's, it's tough. And right now it's very uncertain, still kind of recouping from COVID and the, yeah, the market's all over. Yeah. So what um, advice would you give to a hygienist who's considering transitioning out of clinical hygiene into something else, not specific to real estate, but just in general. Um, I would say like hygiene will always be there. You know, I'm, I would say Florida is probably Florida and California rival for like the hardest to get your, um, your license if you're out of state and it's still, I haven't done it yet, but I still don't think it'll be crazy hard. I think I'll be able to do it. You know, just, just kind of go for it. You hygiene will almost always be there no matter where you're going. Um, it's a great backup. It's great. If you want to completely, you know, leave, like, I think you, I think you only have to have like, you know, 40 hours in the year to keep up your license. So you can literally go try something for 11 months. And if it doesn't work out, go back to your state or, you know, do whatever and, and, you know, keep up hygiene. Or you can do what I'm planning to do is, you know, do your new thing for, most of the week and then do hygiene on the side. So I feel like there's really nothing holding you back. I know it's difficult going from making hygiene money full time to starting to, you know, cutting back on that and starting something completely new. It's hard when you're really knowledgeable to start something new um, that you're not mm -hmm. knowledgeable in, but I think it's, yeah, there's no reason not to, you know, it's just, you can definitely make it work. You can save and then you always have it as a backup. <laughs> which I don't know if that's a great way to think yeah. of it, you know, like you always have something to go fall back on, but it is very stable, you know, you can always go back to it. Yeah, I think, I mean, if I'm being honest, that's one of the reasons I got into it. Like, you can go to any state. Yeah, you have to jump through some hoops, especially Florida and California. Mm -hmm. But you know, pretty much what you're going to be doing all the time, you know, there's going to be a little bit of variation. But 
you you know the role that you're going to be playing no matter what state you're in. So I think there is it's a great field, it but is. you know yeah. sometimes it it runs its course for everybody. So mm. I definitely appreciate you you sharing your path and your journey with us today. Definitely, I really appreciate you guys having me on. It was my first podcast. So sorry if I was stumbling Yay. a bit, but. <laughs> This has been super fun. No, Savannah, you're doing fantastic. We're just grateful to have you and listen to you sharing your experience. (laughs) And I love the blazer you're wearing, actually. So I'm wondering, you you know, when it comes to like reinventing yourself from Savannah, the hygienist to now Savannah, the commercial real estate expert, right? Like, um, do you do you feel like you had to reinvent yourself or do you feel like uh, I don't know what are you thinking? Do you feel like you had to? I think not necessarily had to, but I had the opportunity to highlight areas that I couldn't in hygiene. So I am, like you mentioned, I'm very competitive, which can sometimes come off in a negative way in some industries, but in in real estate, it's everyone's competitive. Um, So I got to really highlight that and um, thing, and I didn't reinvent myself in other ways. Like I am more emotional. I would tend to like stress cry, (laughs) you know, sometimes. And so I decided like, I was like, I don't like that. I'm not going to do that again. And, um, I actually had like a really stressful week. My car completely died. Like I needed a new engine and it happened the day before I started my first day of work. I'm working downtown. So I have to get a parking pass, but now I don't have a car. It was all this stuff. And it's a situation that months ago i absolutely would have cried the second i heard like oh you need a new engine and i but i had already decided like i'm not going to be emotional i'm getting into this industry because i want to be able to make more business like calculated decisions and be taken more seriously Mm -hmm. and so i had already made that decision and i didn't i was able to just compartmentalize it go back to work and then figure it out when i had time um so yeah i think I, like I said, I moved a lot as a child and I really like the opportunity to reinvent yourself. You still have your core self. I'm still, I don't know, funny, I think, or, you know, like honest <laughs> and loyal, things like that. But um, yeah, there are definitely things I was like, okay, I do not like that I did that. Uh, it was hard to get out of whatever habit or whatever box I'd put myself in, in this industry. I'm going to be very intentional to not do that um, in this new industry. So I think it's a great opportunity. Um not only moving industries, but I really like moving locations. I think that also helps. Like you get to meet a whole new group of people. You get to really, you know, if you want to. So I don't know if you remember Joffrey, but in hygiene school, I ate very healthy um, because I used to eat terribly. And so I was like, I'm going to be very intentional to the point where like people were like, could you please stop eating Brussels sprouts in the middle of class? It was terrible. But (laughs) <laughs> that was like an example of like, I was like, hey, I want people to know me as the healthy eater. So that way, when they see me eating a candy bar, they'll be like, oh, wow, you never do that. And so that way you can like really like push yourself to have accountability through others. Um, and so, yeah, so I've kind of done that. I, I like that. I would um, definitely kind of. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I think even the hygienists that are, um, you know, ready to transition out of one office to another office is a great opportunity to reinvent themselves, even as a provider, like Mm -hmm. fresh Mm -hmm. start, you get to just reinvent yourself in that clinic setting. Um, So I think that's just fabulous. Um, But I do remember um, you eating carrots when we were like taking tests. (laughs) <laughs> I, I can't, it could have been you oh or maybe gosh. Caitlin. Somebody was eating carrots every time we had to take tests. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I know I was more of like, I ate a lot of broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Um, I don't know that I ate during tests. I know like, like I have a cough issue. And so I know like so many times during tests, I had to like run to the bathroom and like drink water or something. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I was not, I, I learned a lot of lessons, you know, like you're not supposed to like heat up fish in like a work environment. So I learned lessons like that in hygiene school. Like you need to <laughs> not eat those smelly foods around people, <laughs> eat a rice cake. I don't know. <sighs> hygiene school is such yeah. a blur. <laughs> <laughs> so long ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness. Any um, other okay, questions? Well, Savannah, we always ask, Yes, there's two questions we love to close the show with. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll ask the first one. Savannah, what topics or concepts do you wish you had learned in hygiene school that you learned later on in practice? This is going to sound bad, but like the fake it till you make it thing. <laughs> like I feel like um, mm-hmm. 
a big thing was just like you have to be you have to have authority when you say something and not like making up, you know, answers to things. Like if I didn't know something, you just say like, oh, well, Google that and email you the answer or something. But I think a lot of it, you have to, if you work for the right boss, you have to, um, they're not going to micromanage you. And so you really have to figure stuff out yourself. And in school, they have to have a curriculum, you know, there's teachers that answer every question. And, but I, with that, I feel like you don't have to really like think outside the box. And then when you become a hygienist, especially when you're the hygiene lead and people are now coming to you asking questions and you have no clue, you've only been doing it for two or three years, you really have to start to think outside the box and just kind of like make a decision, try it and go with it. And so I think, yeah, it's hard in any school to teach you to think outside the box. You have to teach a curriculum, but yeah, I wish they kind of gave us a little bit more confidence to be like, Hey, this is the general rule, but they're you know, their patients, everyone's health and mouth is different and there are going to be exceptions and you have to just do your best judgment. Yeah, I think, I think as a hygienist, this is kind of how I think of um, our job, basically like Amanda, the hygienist, like that's a persona that you put on because Mm -hmm. you are that authority in the clinic. And so the role that I play with my patients, I'm not the same person at home. But yeah, in the clinic, yeah, but I'm, this is, I'm the authority on this. So mm-hmm. you're welcome to question me. We can talk about it all day long, but I'm the one that went to school for this. Yeah. So I think also yeah. like that you don't have to know every answer. Like people would ask you questions like, you know, what, True. what toothpaste is your favorite? And, you know, there are some that I'm like, oh, you shouldn't use charcoal or whatever. But I think just being like, well, you know, like, I feel like I would find myself and patients liked it. Like if I was like talking through a solution with them, I was like, well, I would imagine mm-hmm. because of this knowledge that I have, then this would be the case. And um, you can't know everything. And so I think just being like very open right. with that. I think there's some kind of quote that's like someone who answers every single question is lying because you don't know everything. So, yeah, I think I'll yeah. just be like, you're not going to know everything and just figure it out as you go, but be confident with it. Yeah. Okay. The last quas- question. Quash- last question <laughs> that we have. What question? Um, what piece of advice do you wish you could go back and give yourself as a new graduate? Um, so it'd be two. One would be to temp as much as you can. I think that is the best way to figure out what kind of office you like and um, what things are actually important to you. And um, oh, geez, I just forgot the second one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No. Um, also, don't t- take things personally. So I know at first there, you know, every once in a while it happened where a patient would go up to the front and be like, I do not want to see her again. And I'd be like, oh, my gosh, like I am the worst. I would cry because I was a crier <laughs> then, you know, and <laughs> you start to realize like for, you can't please everyone. And, you know, as long as you're doing mm-hmm. your best, like there are times when I was like, you know, yeah, I probably was a little rough or something. Those times, which usually those times, those patients actually were fine. You know, it's just Every once in a while, there'd be something where I thought I did a perfect job and a patient did not like me. And that's not anything against you. Like you said, like you are Amanda, the hygienist, like this is your persona. You know, it's not that they don't like your soul or your heart. It's that they don't like how you clean. And people like the the weirdest stuff sometimes. Like, I want you to really hurt me with floss or, you know, I don't want you to use a scaler. I just want you to polish, you know, (laughs) everyone's going to be different and you can't please everyone. And if you tried to, you're not going to stay true to what you think is important in your career um, or like, yeah, what treatment you think is like the standard. And so you're just going to do your best and learn that, you know, you won't be able to please everyone and, and just telling those people like, Hey, I think we might not be a match and, you know, I'll give you to the other hygienist or this might not be a good office for you. If you have that flexibility with your boss, um, turning, turning patients away who aren't going to align with like your practice, I think is something that takes a while to learn, but will help a lot with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, Savannah, I resonate so much with that response because I yeah. knew <laughs> as a new graduate, um, just felt so offended when someone didn't like me. I remember a patient made me cry because he told me I wasn't old enough to be his hygienist. And oh, I was just heartbroken. I'm like, I'm really good. Like, let me try. You know, I was like, mm-hmm. like just super offended. Like he, he wrecked my whole day. I, I remember it so well. 
But now if I'm not vibing with a patient like mid appointment, I'll even say something like, hey, it's okay. You know, I'll make sure you see somebody else next time. I'm mm -hmm. not even offended. And then they're like, no, no, no almost they're offended, right? Because I'm like, you yeah. don't have to see each other again. It's okay. Yeah. We, we don't have right. to have a second date. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. And then you can really so start building your patient base that like, they come in and they love you, you know, like once you can start getting your regulars mm -hmm. and you like get to feel comfortable and happy and they're asking you about your kids and your hobbies and yeah, sorry, I cut you off. but No, I no, that was perfect. I was just <laughs> had to share that. I'm like, I've grown yeah. a ton on that aspect alone. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and about the, the personas, like, you know, I just recorded a video yesterday about the way you greet somebody makes such a big difference, mm -hmm. right? Just the way you it can change your patient's whole day. It can change your team's whole day. So in the video I recorded yesterday, I'm talking about mm -hmm. like, you know, walking around Disneyland and the Disney characters, they do not break character. And I feel like that is me as a hygienist. I am like on the minute I walk in that mm -hmm. door and then I turn it off the minute I walk out. <laughs> and then I yeah. go. <laughs> well, you can really make a patient's day with that. And like you, I don't know if it's ever happened with you. Like I've had patients where, I haven't seen them before and there's a note or someone at the front who spoke to them and tells me like, Hey, they seem like they're not in a good mood today. And when I'm prepared, I make a mental note and I, then I am like extra nice to them. And a lot of times you can turn their, like turn it around. And if you just like push through those first couple, like rough snarky things that they say, and you're super nice, like, well, I can't keep being rude to her, you know? And so then eventually they're nice. And by the end mm -hmm. they're laughing and joking and, um, yeah, it really is cool. You could actually make quite a bit of a difference if you just like keep keep on that persona and yeah, make an effort. Yeah. I love it. Savannah, thank you so much for chatting with us tonight. Um, yeah, if anybody is out in Florida, in, in Florida and <laughs> needs some commercial real estate, I will send them your way. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yes, Definitely. I just wish you the best of luck. And um, I would mm -hmm. love to, I mean, we follow each other on so many social media platforms, but um, mm -hmm. just kind of keep an eye on your success. And I just want to see you succeed. I think this is a, an awesome new adventure you're on. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. And I reciprocate that. This is really cool. You're doing this podcast, you're starting new, um, you know, businesses within your industry. I think that's amazing. So I'm really excited to see where you guys go as well. And I'm excited to listen to all your podcasts and stay in the hygiene world a little bit. <laughs> this will be my yes. channel into hygiene, you know? <laughs> Subscribe below. Yes. yes. <laughs> this is our, what is it called? This is our pitch. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What awesome. do the kids' videos end with? Like, hit the like button. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, end. Like. the podcast I listen um, to. Yeah, he's... if you appreciated our content, hit the like button yeah. and follow along. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, the podcast I listen to, he says, um, you know, like it. If you like it, put a thumbs up. He's the only person I know who is like, if you don't like it, put a thumbs down. I just like criticism. So I'm like, I would not ask people. Do not put a thumbs down on this. I do not want anyone to say, put a thumbs down. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, my, that's my pitch. Like mm. it. <laughs> no, but thank you, Savannah. Have a good night. Thank and I just thank wish you, you the absolute best. Thank you. You too. I appreciate it. Thanks. It was nice meeting you. Nice to meet you.